So, welcome. Have a good morning. I hope you all wake up and rest from your flights here. Uh, I am Yannick Brasso, I'm a production engineer at Facebook on the kernel team. So, our job is mostly to make the kernel better, faster, more stable. And uh, I'm here to present you what, what our effort about like tracing and debugging on the kernel side. So we'll be talking about what do we do currently, uh, what, the kind of, what kind of challenge we face in implementing some tracing infrastructure, and what we want to do in the future. So imagine like morning, like this morning, you get, you wake up, take your coffee, do what you do usually, which is go to your Facebook feed, and you get this kind of white page. Uh, it basically load, but it kind of stop in the middle. The first thing you think will be like your internet connection is kind of bad, it doesn't load, you have something weird, you check on that side. Maybe your ISP, something is slow over there. But it might also be that we just like have some issue on our side. Some request, some web server got a syscall and it got to just a really long latency in some read on the file system and the request just doesn't get sent out. So the kernel, kernel issue can affect your Facebook performance, even that we have multiple servers to serve you, we might get some specific error. Uh, that's why we care a lot about like kernel performance and issue on that side. Uh, just a side note about the kernel development uh, at Facebook. Uh, we currently like try to a new approach, which is like working more with upstream, uh, which means we want to run newer kernel with less patches, which means less work for us when we move between kernel. We don't have to carry internal patches around, and we, just, we can just like send up upstream, have them apply, and just release a new kernel with our patch inside. It also means running newer kernel, don't having to fix bugs that are already fixed. We sometimes, when we run other kernel, we hit some bugs, they bug for a while, and we just end up finding that the bugs were already fixed in the kernel released three months ago. And on the tracing side and the tooling side, the, one of the biggest benefits that we tell other users at Facebook is that you can use like really better tools, like all the tracing infrastructure is way better than your kernel, so we can go forward and be more efficient in our analysis of the kernel issues and performance. So basically there's three things that we are looking for on the tracing side. Uh, obviously, uh, latency issue inside the kernel, either in syscall, block layer, network layer. Uh, general slowness of the kernel, though, so maybe not just a specific syscall, but just we run a workload on, a different, on two different kernels, and one of them will be uh, slower than the other. So having to find out why this workload is slower uh, might be a more difficult endeavor than just looking at one specific long syscall. Uh, it might be schizo related or some really strange interaction between subsystems in the kernel. So that's one thing we try to get better between, uh, we want to like always have a better kernel, a uh, better performing kernel between release. And the third one is like just some strange behavior. So if you do just, uh, if you have like a call or a syscall that you do and just does the right thing, we want to be able to uh, debug that. Our current use of tracing, first part, we do some user space tracing. We have uh, two main tools. The first one is Perflab, which is we able to uh, copy code about, uh, compare code like doing some A-B testing, so the old version, the new version, uh, run the workload, some workload on it, and be able to decide that the new, kernel, the new code that we run is faster or slower. Uh, the second one is uh, FB trace is uh, something in the infrastructure where we can trace the whole uh, request across multiple services, the database, uh, the web uh, interface, or the caching subsystem. It's all a bit similar to, you're probably familiar with Dapper or uh, Zipkin from Twitter. Uh, it's a similar infrastructure where we collect everything. It's not yet uh, related to uh, the kernel. We don't collect kernel trace yet there. Some maybe future goal that we'll see. And we have some other smaller more localized uh, data collection, either really specific uh, to one uh, system or mother, but it's most, mostly uh, ad hoc data collection at that point. Uh, we use a lot of the kernel tracing for debugging. So we use all the standard uh, tool out there, system tap, perf, ftrace, block trace, to find out like when we get some requests, some user, just like there's something slow in the kernel, we would like to uh, find what's better. 
So we get out uh, our tool chain and just dig into it. Um, on the monitoring side, which is the more interesting, more uh, advanced one, uh, we just deploy a new tool called we call kernel iostat. It's a simple daemon that do a sample and collect like latency between uh, syscalls, mostly related to I/O, so read, write, uh, block queue, and we just sample like uh, some second out every minute on some servers. We log all data, all this data. We log all the histogram and log that into a tool that we call UDS, which is our data collection, and we can generate. Uh, this kind of graph over time about any services or a specific server or group of services do average so we can identify uh, what are the worst latency and the next step will be to like you can even create alarms on like uh, to really to high latency on our systems. Uh, the second one is a call it TCP stat. Uh, TCP stat is a patch set that able to collect more detailed statistics on the TCP stack. Um, we collect that with some uh, network uh, trace point and be able to collect, uh, correlate different kind of uh, network statistics. Uh, this graph is uh, the, um, the number of retransmit between two services, like, like the web server versus like, the cache uh, server, and we can see like over time that the, the latency, uh, the number of retransmit change. So we can identify and correlate that to other event on the system and uh, check if it, is it a kernel issue, is it a system issue, but we have data to uh, identify uh, that kind of issues. Strobe Light is a tool based on perf. It runs on uh, some of the service and it takes some snapshots over time. Again, just a sampling uh, of it. And it's just like a real sample plot. We log it into Scribe, which is a data collection pipeline in Hive, and we display it with uh, Scuba, which is another data um, uh, display tool that we have. This is a nice uh, flame graph that we generate with it. We can also just display a simple call stack. Uh, we don't have it running at that point. We have running not on the old system, just some specific server, mostly on user space. Uh, we had it running before the kernel, but as I'll say later, uh, the usage went out a little bit, maybe BB just because there's just too much data out of that. So it's really hard to correlate a lot of strike together and just have a, like one number that tell you is it better, is it worse? You need to go like, it's good for like going back and debugging if you know you have sp one specific machine that had an issue at that point. But having it on the long term and just having some trends, it's hard to get some data uh, out of that. We have also like not directly tracing, but we have other kernel issue monitoring. The first one, uh, we have a tool uh, to collect all the crash dump, all the kernel panic that we have. So every time a machine panic, we collect the core, log that, categorize that, and uh, we can have also some trending, some graphs, some alerting on that to uh, say we get like too many issues. So if we release a new kernel, we can categorize by a kernel and see is this new kernel is better or worse, as we release a new kernel a new, uh, about every two months, uh, we can get uh, data really quick about this issue. We also have a deploy net console almost everywhere, so we get all the network data through the network, all the console data through the network, uh, unless you have network issue, where the net console will break, but it allows also to categorize, we can collect like uh, statistics about disk issue, uh, with any kind of error you get into the DMSH, so disk issue, out of memory issue, uh, some bugs that will uh, pop there, so it's uh, useful for collecting and just trending the number over there. We also collect, uh, we have another tool in parallel that will collect all the logs, so we have two ways to extract the kernel logs, so if one will fail, we can get the, the, the same data on the, uh, other, on the other side. The current challenge we face, tracing is really nice, get a gun tool, but we add some roadblock in uh, some of the deployment that we had. First one is uh, the versioning. So we deploy a new kernel, a new kernel version, so we end up having a lot of different kernel version around. Uh, I think some, we have kernel version mismatch, some tools, some kernel module that we build will work on only specific kernels, so having that managed properly is uh, something that's really struggle like when we have uh, multiple thousand, hundred of thousand servers. Uh, compiler version mismatch is another issue that we add. Uh, we don't use the system compiler to compile. We have another version of GCC that we use for better performance or 
to have uh, a better compiler on older version of uh, the base operating system. But when you compile a module or some tools with one compiler and the kernel with another one, uh, it doesn't work at all. You get some mismatch or issue, the module won't load. So that's a, a struggle that we have. Uh, running newer version of the tool on older uh, distributions. So you might compile the new tools with the new library at JLibc, or it rely on the new system on JLibc, and you try to deploy that on an older system. That doesn't work. And, uh, or just try and get the older version and have the newest on new kernel, and the, the old version just doesn't support the new uh, feature of the new kernel. So that's the first challenge, having to maintain that, uh, maintaining a set of packages that work well across the whole infrastructure, across all the different component that we have. We cannot upgrade all the system at, at once. That would be really not feasible to stop the whole Facebook, upgrade everything, and uh, go ahead. Uh, people will probably don't like us very much. The other part related to versioning is uh, packaging and distributing all of that. Uh, specific one, uh, on the perf side, uh, the, since the tool, the code source resides with the kernel, uh, but we don't have a standalone source or packages uh, to build, so we need to build it out of the tree or with the tree. Uh, at the same time, uh, we build the kernel, but we don't really need to release a new perf every time we release a new kernel. If we release the like 10 different version of a 310 kernel, we can reuse the same perf if the tool didn't change much over there. So having to build it with the same source uh, is an issue that we have to maintain the package. We have to do some trickery there uh, to manage that. Uh, trace command packages. Uh, we have the source there, it's good, but we wanted to get, we don't want to maintain too much. We want to rely on like the CentOS or even like the Red Hat packages, but uh, looking upstream, they didn't have the latest version and we wanted to have the latest version. So we had to build uh, one ourselves and uh, go ahead and maintain it by ourselves, which is something that we, uh, kernel team is growing, but uh, we still not, uh, we, we still not have enough people to do uh, all the work we want. So if we can rely on the open source community to do some, uh, to provide all the, the recent version, will be better. La latest part, I used to work on the LTTG team and I'm really sad that I have this, this issue, still this issue. Uh, out of tree module, when you build kernel often and distribute it across a lot of uh, system, it's, uh, it's difficult you need to build separate RPM, uh, sync that, uh, the version issue, and deploy that. So having out of tree module is something that uh, creates a roadblock. Uh, it's, not answer, it's not impossible to surpass it, but it's hard to, uh, we, can, uh, we need to do some work and we cannot use the tool out of the box. Third part, uh, stability. Uh, if you want to run tracing on all our server all the time, uh, we can support some crash. We have a lot of machines and we are really like, I have ability, we can fall back onto the machine. But as I say at the beginning, if one request gets stuck on a crashing machine, this request, this user will get probably a bad experience. So it's really important to have tool that don't crashes, don't look up, and don't have memory leak. And that's all issue that we have with different tools over the past. Like uh, the load on our system are really, really important, and we have a lot of machines. So we'll end up if there's a weird race condition in some buffer and some ring buffer somewhere, we will hit it and uh, get crash or look up at that point. So it's really important when we uh, when we develop a tool to uh, make sure it's really bug free and it will work. Uh, you have some test case and to cover everything there. And since we run like daemons to collect data over time, uh, and some machine can have enough time really, really long, uh, I think memory leaks, we can always restart a daemon after a week, but that's something that the best thing to do. Uh, we can work around, but we'd like to just leave it there, leave it learning. So make sure you, that's something that uh, you, we can test over time and just leave some dumb daemon running over a long time to make sure we don't leak too much. Performance size. Uh, side, I put the slide first uh, before looking at data. Uh, doesn't seem to be an issue so far, so that's good. Uh, we don't see like a big impact about running some sampling or some tracing workload on the system, so it doesn't seem to affect the performance, the whole performance of uh, a request. So that's a good job. Uh, one of the last one, it's just like well, like I said before, the, the amount of data that we collect in tracing is. Uh, 
maybe a little bit too big, uh, how to get that to, to, uh, to users so they can use it properly. Uh, like I said, the strobe light, tool, the strobe light tool that we had kind of didn't kind of die by us because nobody were using it. Uh, my uh, hypothesis is that uh, too much data was getting out and people were not able to get the insight into it. And uh, sampling is good. Our scale will probably catch all the problem just by sampling, uh, but we can still miss error. And especially if you have a lower number of server, uh, you will get outliers that uh, won't show up the problem that you might have. So for the future, either like what we want to do or mostly like the wish wish we have for the community, uh, what we would like to have and see happening. Uh, first part, an improvement on dynamic tracing. Uh, system tap is still, uh, still nice, still useful, but having to compile a module, deploy a module, some system that won't have the, uh, GCC installed, so having a solution like KeyTap or EBF something, I'll never remember the acronym, uh, embedded into the kernel uh, will be something that we, we would really like to have to uh, help our debug, like especially on live system that takes uh, real production uh, traffic. Uh, as you might have we heard, we are working a lot on the network stack to improve it, improve its performance. Uh, we don't have any specific yet, but part of that, that, that work having more or more specific network trace point, uh, it's some area that might be lacking currently in the kernel, so we might want or might uh, submit a new kernel trace point, new network trace point that will enable us to have a better insight into the performance of the uh, network stack in the kernel. Uh, another thing we would like to, to work on, uh, extracting trace buffer from a crash dump. So if you keep tracing and you get the kernel, uh, uh, kernel panic, be able to easily extract the, the trace data out of that will get a better insight into what was happening before the crash instead of just the current memory. Uh, something that will benefit our crash dump uh, data collection. So with things like, like uh, currently running a trace buffer, uh, you can just like get uh, good data out of that without having a big impact and having to record everything uh, there. I mentioned quickly a TCP stat about uh, getting more statistics about a TCP. So we something we'd like to see upstream either by us or the community route, route TCP stat. Uh, so we can have like uh, all of there. That's a kind of there's a lot of patch there that we maintain internally, apply internally, and we need to move forward when we or apply back when we change kernel. That's something that uh, we'll get. We will benefit greatly in the if it's upstream. Uh, some more random idea. I've been some way to like auto sample inside the trace tool. So we just like say, uh, run the tool. Give me a sample every minute, every two minutes of like a one second, a two second trace. So we don't have to rely on user space to like wake up, do this request, set up the tracing, stop the tracing, record data. So something that would be interesting to have directly inside the kernel. Uh, in the tracing tools. And the last part, uh, having more analysis. Uh, it's nice to have data, but we have more tools. Uh, in my previous lab, I work uh, in the Dorsal lab, and uh, with LTTNG, we're working in a lot, lot of analysis tools. But uh, having more of that available to everybody to, to get easy, to get the, an easy insight into the performance of your system, where are the bug, and something that can collect a lot of data that is easy to distribute uh, on several systems uh, will get really good for us to get, get better inside, better performance, so we can like debug the kernel and help, help improve the performance of the kernel. So that was a quick insight into what we are doing on the tracing side. Uh, I think we have a couple of minutes for questions or comments, suggestions if you have any, uh, if you are still uh, woke up. Or feel free to come talk to us later. We have a mic around if some. Questions? You're all sleeping? Yep. So, because I'm sleeping, I may have missed it, but um, what are you using for regression testing? Uh, regression testing, we are currently deploying uh, some test infrastructure to uh, automatically test the kernel. Um, the main thing we have, we have uh, that we do a lot is just test the kernel, uh, cut like 
took maybe 10, 20, 15 machines and just deploy the kernel on the end and look at the performance of these machines. That's something that we do a lot at Facebook, uh, doing live testing. But we are doing, like, deploying some system based on auto test uh, that we want to compare some basic testing, some either like internal tests or use like a standard tool. Uh, to do some testing. It's still, it's still something in deployment, but uh, we hope to get better at that at some point. Other question? Thank you.